Hi there. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Zombie Fan, or you can just call me Zombie for short. And before you ask, yes, I'm a zombie. No, I'm not going to eat you. But I figured since I tried this YouTube thing out, I'm going to go ahead and respond to this video. Five Reasons Why Console Gaming is Better Than PC Gaming by David DeFranco. And without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Last week I made a video detailing five reasons why I believe PC gaming is better than console gaming. Yeah, I upset a handful of people. As expected, that's how gamers are. We're passionate, we get defensive, perfectly normal. But as promised, today's video is all about five reasons why console gaming is better than PC gaming. You heard me. Let's talk about it. Oh boy, I can't wait to see what reasons you come up for how consoles are better than PC. This is gonna be glorious. Hello guys, who are you? My name is David Franco from davidstwitch.com. Right there, follow me, I appreciate it. I stream pretty much every day, every single day. But Sunday, Sunday is the day of the Maui. Let us pray. Um, I think this is supposed to be comedy, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Seriously though, let's talk about five reasons why I believe console gaming is better than PC gaming. Now, first of all, let me make this clear. I love my PC. I play my PC so much more than I do my consoles. So I'm not playing favorites. I'm not one of those gamers who says, PC Master Race, console Master Race, because I have to feel huge. I have to feel, I have to feel good about myself. I have to feel insecure in a way. That's what Master Race is to me, insecurity. <laughs> Fucking ironic, you are calling people say PC Master Race insecure when you have the like and dislike ratio <laughs> disabled on your video. And also, the PC Master Race thing, it's a fucking meme. Sorry guys, that is not me at all. I'm just the kind of gamer who plays anything and plays everything. And that's how everybody should be. But for today's video, let's focus on console gaming. Starting out with number one. It just works. It just works. Um, David, I really, really don't recommend taking advice from Todd Howard. I don't think anybody in their right mind can argue this. As much as I love my PC, and I'm sure my friends can back me up and my chat room can back me up. <sighs> PC gaming can be a huge pain in the ass sometimes. It really can. Drivers aren't updated. Your hardware is incompatible. Software that was working yesterday is suddenly running like shit today. Well, David, if you're really so worried about keeping drivers up to date, just turn on auto updates. And if you're worried about hardware compatibility, do your research before you fucking buy them. And also, don't download software from shady websites. It will not end well. But with consoles, you literally just put that little round object in, you know, the little disc, or maybe you can download it and the game loads. Sure, there might be like a day one patch or whatever, but that's perfectly normal. But my point is, console gaming, it just works. You sit down on your couch and you enjoy your game. Except for I gotta wait for the game to finish updating. Games instantly loading on consoles haven't been a thing on there for a really long time. And if a game crashes on console, I have no way of fixing it. I gotta wait for the developers to actually fix it. So no, it doesn't just work. How many times have you seen me on Twitch get frustrated over a sudden frames per second drop? Because again, like last week, maybe something like Overwatch was streaming just fine. But this week, I'm getting like 15 frames per second on stream. It doesn't make sense. And that's easily my least favorite thing about PC gaming is that the experience is very, very fragmented. I mean, if you're having performance issues, just go into your settings and adjust them. This applies for both your games and your streams. And if that doesn't work, then it's probably a good chance that it's your internet. Number two, exclusives are everything. Ugh, I didn't get out of my mausoleum today just to go ahead and hear this argument again. Anyway, exclusives are everything. And sometimes PC users are left out. Grand Theft Auto 5, anyone? It took, what, like a year or two to come out on PC? Red Dead Redemption 2, there's really no signs of a PC release coming out anytime soon. We've got the Xbox exclusives, which are mostly on PC, but there's some games that we miss out on. Obviously, the Switch has its own category of games. The PC, mark my words, will never 
ever see official releases of games like Super Mario Brothers or uh, Yoshi's Crafted World coming out in a few weeks on the Switch or Pokemon games or whatever. It's just never going to happen. And then, of course, on the PlayStation side, we've got games like Spider-Man and, and God of War and The Last of Us. Anyone? The Last of Us is just an incredible experience all around, and you're never, ever going to see that on PC. Oof, um, that didn't age well, considering that after this video was made, Red Dead Redemption 2 did get announced for a PC port, and for the Switch library, those can be emulated. I mean, there's a working Switch emulator right now, and I find it very fucking funny that you'd think The Last of Us is great. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, if you're only playing on PC, you're gonna miss out on some truly remarkable experiences on console. I'm gonna say it again, play anything and play everything. Don't limit yourself. David, have it ever crossed your mind that probably not every PC gamer is interested in playing console games or even just buying a console, but for that matter. Number three, multiplayer games, I just have my notes right here. Multiplayer games have a longer lifespan on console than they do on PC, for the most part. Um, how do you know that multiplayer games last longer on consoles than on PC? Do you got any numbers to back that up? Call of Duty Black Ops 4, anyone? Blackout has been slowly dying on PC, even, even with this week's big grand heist update that finally released on PC, first on PS4 last week, uh, but the PC player base is just dwindling like crazy. Sure, an update here and there, I might see a little spike, but even the um, optimistic side of me says, nope, that spike's gonna quickly drop down again, and Blackout is kind of a dead game. Ugh, I don't wanna have to use Metacritic, but I have to, so please take these numbers with a little bit of grain of salt. So, the PS4 version for Black Ops 4 is sitting at a 3.9, while the Xbox One version has been sitting at a 4.0, and finally, the PC version sitting at a 3.1. So, no, David, th this game has been dying on all platforms. It's a lot harder to find active multiplayer games on PC than it is console. I guarantee you, if you launch Blackout on PS4 or Xbox today, instantly, instantly, you're gonna drop into a full lobby, for the most part. But on PC, yesterday, I was just playing Blackout, and I believe our game started at, what, like 68 players max? Sad moment, sad moment. But then again, with games like Siege and Battlefield, I think the PC community kind of favors games like that, uh, or those rather, over console players. So it easily goes both ways. It just kind of depends on where the player base is and which platform you prefer. Well, back when I used to play on my PS4 a lot, I was actually able to get into a match in Battlefield 4 pretty easily and pretty quickly. And trust me, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing for Siege. I mean, people still talk about those games because, well, they're good games. And Black Ops 4, well, isn't one of them. And so the player base is going to dwindle. But this next part, this, this fourth reason, is what really fucking pisses me off with this video. Number four. The home theater experience. You just can't beat it. This is something I miss all the time. All the time when I'm PC gaming. Is that I just don't have that home theater experience that I used to have. If you've missed that home theater experience that you used to have, then take your PC and hook it up to your TV. And get a controller, plug it into a USB port, or get a wireless dongle, and just activate Steam Big Picture Mode. Yeah, I have my basement, which is still a work in progress, and... Yeah, eventually I will play huge, huge releases down there, like, you know, The Last of Us Part 2 and whatever. Oh shit, David is in the progress of becoming a basement dweller. <laughs> but still, the point stands, uh, you just cannot beat that home theater experience. And please don't even tell me, David, but you have surround sound on your headphones. No. No, 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 no. Nothing beats the experience of sitting down on a comfy couch, having a 65-inch 4K TV in front of you, two Polk Audio tower speakers, a Polk Audio center channel, and your rear speakers behind you with dual subwoofers, a nice receiver. That right there is the ultimate gaming experience. But David, you can play PC on TV. Yeah, you can, but I strongly believe PCs belong on a desk. PCs do not, I repeat, do not belong in the living room. And this is the part that really pisses me off. So David is gonna go ahead and handicap the PC in order to actually score points for the consoles. 
You know what, Fertango was right to take away your PC gamer's license. Being able to hook up your PC to your TV is an advantage, but if you were just to go ahead and say, well, I'd prefer my PC at my desk, that much is fine, I don't give a shit. But when you go ahead and handicap the PC, that's when I have a problem, that's when I get irritated. Even with like the Steam Big Picture Experience or whatever it's called, or the Steam Controller, I strongly believe, guys, like PCs do not belong in the living room. It's just a very fragmented experience having the keyboard and mouse in your um, your uh, lap or your coffee table or whatever. It's just not the same. PCs in the office, on the desk, your gaming room or whatever. Consoles on the couch. So you know that Steam Big Picture mode is a thing. And also, you don't have to use a mouse and keyboard in big picture mode. You can just use a controller hooked up to a wireless dongle or plugged in to a USB port. My fucking god, David. This is why I gave up my humanity. Too many people saying stupid shit. That's how it's always going to be with me. I will never, ever have a gaming PC hooked up to my TV. Ever. At least for like a gaming experience. I've had it hooked up to my Samsung TV, but only for the chat room. And that's because my last bedroom was very small compared to this bedroom. Technically, it's a bedroom. I don't use it as a bedroom. But yes, there you go. Home theater experience. You just can't beat it. And please, hold your negative comments if you never played a game with surround sound. You don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. It truly is that much better. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give all the negative comments. I'm dead anyway, and I don't give a shit. This... None of these are points so far. All of these are nothing more but preference. And number five, local multiplayer. LAN parties on PC are fun, but they require a ton of work. I'm gonna say it again, nothing beats the experience of sitting down on a couch, but with friends. I mean, local multiplayer games are still a thing on the PC, and all I gotta do is just hook up more controllers to more USB ports. It's really not that hard. How many times have you played Melee, you know, Super Smash Brothers Melee or Mario Kart or the good old days of GoldenEye and Perfect Dark with friends. Those right there were the good old days. Now, do I miss them? Of course, here and there, but I'm perfectly fine with playing games on PC with my friends on Discord and chatting with my chat room over here. It's an experience that really is incredible, but part of me really does miss that local multiplayer experience that you just can't get on PC. Unless, again, you set up a LAN party which requires a ton of work. And yes, I've been to a few LAN parties. It's a ton of fun, but I haven't been to a LAN party in years, and I don't see myself being back at one for a very long time, or if ever. Hopefully, but I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Quick question, who still has LAN parties today? And to add on to this topic, another user who goes by Joe from Seattle has even said in one of his videos that he plays Super Smash Brothers on his PC with his cousin through an emulator. So, no, local multiplayer isn't in favor of the consoles. So guys, there you have it. Those are my five reasons why I believe console gaming is better than PC gaming. And they weren't even reasons to begin with in the first place. And you may think that this is over, but oh no, I may be done with the video, but I'm not done with David here. For you see, David, he has a little bit of a history of not taking criticism well, and in fact, has actually false DMCA'd a few people. Those people include Mario Sniper, who is a good buddy of mine, Joe from Seattle, It's Tough, and Fratanga Plays. All four of them have responded to this video long before I did, and in the case of the first three, when they got false DMCA'd, since they're smaller channels, they had no way of fighting back, which is absolutely fucking shitty. But with Fratanga, Fertanka has a very sizable following and actually called David out on his bullshit. After David received a lot of fucking backlash, he ended up releasing the four DMCA's on them. And then later on made a very awful apology video where he tried to come across as the victim and never owned up to any of his mistakes and tried to come across more as a self-righteous prick. And that's all she wrote. If you all enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see future content I'll be posting, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all next time.